Hi, and marhaba again. I'm Dr. Rasul Sharif, and I hope that you have watched episode two about the great Sumerians. If you did not, you can go back and watch it anytime. So let's continue the journey into the Middle East, or better say, the fertile crescent civilizations. Today, I will tell you the story of the Akkadians, the Babylonians, the Egyptians, and more. Welcome into episode 3. The Akkadians conquered Soma in 2334. This civilization lasted only 141 years because they were warriors. They wanted to fight, but the first King Sargon was, the legend tells us, he was found floating on a basket. He was raised and became king, just like Moses. Sargon did not destroy Soma, but absorbed their culture. The first empire to, to rule all over Mesopotamia, the first empire like I can see here, they ruled all over Mesopotamia and even part of the Levant. Sargon became the first person in history to create an empire ruling over a multi-ethnic people. That's all about the Akkadians. Let's move into another important um, Mesopotamia civilization, which is the Babylonians, the Babylonians. Those, they conquered Akkad. This is an important civilization which lasted 1,200 years. They built houses of clay and they built, have you heard about Towers of Babel? Uh, Babel was the greatest city on earth at the time. They controlled large areas. If you notice, the Babylonians, they controlled all Mesopotamia and the Levant. They worshipped the sun, moon, stars. They were farmers also. They had orchards of figs, olives, and barley. Uh, Babylonians are famous for their sixth king, Hammurabi. Hammurabi of Babylon. Have you heard of him? He's a world figure. He's, Hammurabi is very well known for his he established a code of law, laws. It was the first time in history that a king, a monarch, introduces laws into his life, into his people's lives. In addition, he has other competencies, his irrigation system, improved religion, he reorganized taxes, and he built houses for people. Um, Hammurabi's first code of law known in history was discovered written in Sumerian cuneiform, if you remember. Sumerian written on a tablet, this one, it was discovered. Here's a sample from Hammurabi Code of Law. It sounds funny, but it was a law. For example, I read for you. If anyone brings an accusation against a man and the accused go to the river and jump into the river, if he sinks in the river, his accuser shall take ownership of his house. But if the river proves that the accused is not guilty and he escapes and hurt, then who had brought the accusation shall be put to death. All right. So while he who jumped into the river shall take ownership of the house that had belonged to his accuser. Look at Trump. Trump is surprised, shocked. I think he can write better laws. One of the famous thing in the Babylonian era is the Epic of Gilgamesh. You may heard about it. It's the first it's the first long poem. The oldest epic tale in world was written 1,500 years before Homer wrote the Iliad. If you want to read about it. Have you heard about the Hanging Gardens? Great thing. It's one of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon were one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Hanging Gardens were built by the king second uh, Nebuchadnezzar the second, we call him in Arabic Nebuchadnezzar, for his wife, Queen Anitus, they were a great thing. Uh, as I said, they built also the Tower of Babel. According to Genesis, the Bible, the Babylonians wanted to make a name for themselves by building a mighty city and a tower, with its top in the heavens, if you are interested in Genesis. So this tower is mentioned in the Quran, when uh, God sent two angels to Babylon for some reason. It's a long story, but it's Babylon was an important city on earth. Babylonians enslaved the Jews and started their diaspora. 
In 589 BC, Nebuchadnezzar attacked Jerusalem, destroyed the city and its temple. He took professionals, priests, craftsmen, and wealthy. He deported them to Babylon, where they stayed there for 70 years until, according to the story, the Cyrus, Cyrus the Persian king, liberated them from Babylon, took them back to Jerusalem. That was about the Babylonians with very important civilization. Let's come to another another Mesopotamia civilization or first of all, the Assyrian Empire, the Assyrian Empire. Those they defeated all nations and they didn't last very long. They were a nation of warriors, they were brutal warriors, they had horses, wore chariots, and they ruled vast territories, all Mesopotamia, the Levant, and they penetrated into ancient Egypt as well. But I said as they were brutal and passed this to the Persians who came after them. They set the standard for imperial rule for generations. They perfected brutal tortures techniques, as we can see in this image, unfortunately, and they perfected the techniques of siege warfare. This is all about <clears throat> the Assyrians. They didn't contribute very much. They didn't survive very long time. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is actually the end of talking about the Mesopotamia <clears throat> civilization. Mesopotamia nowadays Iraq civilizations. Now I'll move into telling you the story of Levant, which is nowadays Palestine, Lebanon, Syria, uh, civilizations, and then the Egyptians, which is all, they are all part of the Fertile Crescent. Do you remember when I talk about the Fertile Crescent? <clears throat> Let me tell the story of the Egyptian civilizations. Those people, they actually lived around the Nile, on the Nile banks, because without the Nile, Egypt wouldn't exist. Egypt is the gift of the Nile. Now, the Egyptians are, uh, or we call them the pharaohs, because their kings were called pharaohs in Arabic, pharaoh. Those, they started their civilization 3,000 and more before Christ. They were great and thinking civilizations, one of the richest and most powerful. They worshipped the Nile and the sun, their kings called Pharaoh, and actually they worshipped their Pharaohs, their kings. They built the pyramids, the great structure we will talk about, and they had many noteworthy contributions, but we cannot talk about everything because it would take so much time. One of their greatest contribution is they developed a writing system which we call the hieroglyphs. The hieroglyphs is a set of pictures and symbols that represent words, right? And these pictures developed into an abjad. An abjad is a writing system comprised of consonants, no vowels if you know languages. The vowels can be marked in writing like Arabic. So these hieroglyphs developed into abjads. Like for example, Arabic is an abjad language, consists of 28 letters. Vowels are supplied by the addition of diacritics above and below the letter, which we call tashkil. Let me give you an example. For example, this is the letter B, okay, with a dot below. I can say, I, if I put this, it sounds B, that's a vowel. If I put this below, it's B, that sounds B. If I do that, it's bamboo. So, abject languages are controlled by the skill, the pronunciation. Hieroglyphs is, is very strange. I mean, it could be written in almost any direction, left to right, right to left, top to down. The reader would figure out which way to read it by direction of the symbols. Isn't that interesting? It had no punctuation. Let's talk about their greatest achievement, which is building the pyramids. Now, there are some facts about the pyramids, but you can read more. Imagine a time with no advanced machinery, when there were no cranes, no forklifts. The ancient Egyptians erected these pyramids with stones that weigh about 5 to 10 tons per piece. How did they do that? The Great Pyramid of Giza, which is 139 meters high, is believed to contain 
2,300,000 stones. And each one weighs 2 to 30 tons. Unbelievable. Researchers until now, researchers until now, they are working and trying to figure out how they achieve such a feat, which took 200 years to build. But the very unique fact about these pyramids is that whatever the temperature as outside, it will remain at around 20 inside, 20 degrees Celsius, whatever. So what kind of air conditioning system they had? The Greek historian Herodotus, you remember him in my introduction, I talked about him, claimed that in 500 BC that 100,000 people participate in building the pyramids. They also had a calendar, you can read about that. And they invented papyrus, so they had paper which we they invented from this plant. For the first time, human beings had paper. They also made the ink by grinding bright colored minerals into powder. Then they actually invented ink. Then they invented a reed pen. They took a bamboo, they cut it at one end, they would dip it in ink and write on papyrus. This is the end of episode three, talking about, finishing talking about uh, Mesopotamia civilizations and the Egyptians. I hope to see you in, I hope you have enjoyed this one. And tell your friends, I hope to see you in episode 4 to talk about other civilizations in the Fertile Crescent and in the Middle East. Bye for now.